Hello everyone, I am Kyle Cannon and I work on internal tooling at PlayStation as a staff software engineer. Today I would like to share some unconventional ways to utilize the Angular router with micro front ends. Let's get started. The reality is, micro front ends may be something as simple as a login form or as complicated as a single page application in nature. Wouldn't it be nice to utilize the functionality provided by the Angular router to employ functionality such as code splitting, guards, and named router outlets? I have coined this the Dream Stack which stands for Domless Routing Engine Allowing Madness. See, the idea behind the Dream Stack is to allow combining many single page applications as siblings on a page, while ensuring each sibling application is not aware of one another. This would allow each Angular application that is loaded in as a sibling to have its own sandbox instance of the Angular router. However, Angular's router has a guard that prevents this from working out of the box. So, what if we trick the guard by utilizing Angular's dependency injection system to our advantage? See, each time an element is created, an element injector is created as well. Each element injector in return has access to the parent element injector. The dependency injection system will walk up the tree until it finds the matching token and return the value if possible. To short circuit the dependency resolution to the router guard, we need to create a new provider for the router token that sets the value as null. We can do this by utilizing a static injector that sits between our new application and the host application. On the left, I have the application that I am going to load in called widget A. Each app registration needs a name and a bundle property that expects an ng module to be resolved as a promise after invoking the function. This functions exactly like the load children in the Angular router. Now to load the app registration, we create a static injector that accepts a parent injector. After loading the federated ng module bundle and compiling it, we then pass in the static injector we created into the ng module factory create method. We can now create a provider token for the router with the value of null, along with creating our own platform location that is decoupled from the browser's DOM, allowing for every application instance to have a router that is detached from the browser's window.location. The next step is to make a pure pipe that utilizes the app loader's create ng module ref function, which accepts the app registration and the parent injector. From there, we need to render our app module on the left. So we create a structural directive that accepts the ng module ref as the value. From there, we extract the injector and the entry component from our MFE app module instance. This allows us to specify what component to render in a reusable and predictable way. Finally, after inserting our new application, we call a router.initial navigation and detect changes on the component factory ref. To bring it all together, we build our app instance component. We use our render app structural directive we just created, push the app registration into our pipe that we just created, and provide the app instance component injector as the parent injector on the pipes argument. Finally, we use ngrx push to unwrap the observable. And now let's take a look. So if we see here, we have a series of tabs at the top, each representing a separate shipped single page application with a remote entry point for module federation to combine them all together. So to show how the routing works, we can click that first route, we can click that second route, it's going to work. We have NGRX store as well. We're gonna go over to our scorecard, it's the same principle, along with our tour of heroes that I brought in as well. Cool. So I created this dream dashboard, which basically combines all of these single page applications together, and we can make a dashboard out of it. So if we needed to have two score scoreboards, because we're doing, let's just say, you know, Two baseball games, great. We can have the home score here and we can have the away score here. Uh, doesn't matter, we can have the first route changed on this one and we can change the second route on this one. And it doesn't interfere with our URL at the top, which is fantastic. So we wanna create a counter, that's not a problem either. We can create that first route, that second route, same thing, nothing changes. We can increment that count as well. Each individual one, has its own NGRX store as well. So I'm getting a lot of stuff on here. I'm just gonna clear this up. So what if we wanted to nest this? Well, we can create a dashboard and a dashboard and a dashboard and a dashboard. And we can have a counter here and we can have a counter here and a counter here and a tour of heroes here, even though it's not gonna look very well. Now, 
we can navigate to our Toro Heroes here. Perfect. We can change that second route here, and we can change it up here to the first route. And everything is just isolated. As everyone knows, five minute talks have a lot of content in a very short amount of time, which is why the source code is available on GitHub for you to take a look at at your own pace. Please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter if you have any questions. And I would like to give a special thanks to the following folks, where if I didn't have their support, this talk would have not been possible. Thank you.